Action Canada plays Costa Rica tonight, 10 o'clock on Sportsnet, 9.30 pregame. Paul Stalteri is an assistant coach with Toronto FC. 84 caps for Canada, two-time Canadian Soccer Player of the Year. He joins us on the Fan Soccer Show. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for joining Vivek Jacob and myself. Uh, I'll, I'll, I, I made this comment a little earlier in the show. Um, what's going through your mind when you see this group of players poised to advance to the World Cup as somebody who has put in you know, so many hard yards and kind of kept the flame going in this country at a time where playing for the Canadian men's team you know, wasn't, wasn't always a ticket to the, to the World Cup. Let's put it that way. Hey guys, how you doing? First of all, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, tremendous pride. I mean, I think it's a it's a great thing to see that the that the country is uh, is where it is right now in terms of of football. It's not even attracting attention throughout Concacaf uh, throughout the world. Quite frankly, I'm getting you know some some calls, some some interest, even doing some some talks with uh, with a couple of uh, places in in Germany. They've got some real interest, obviously, because of uh, with Alfonso being involved. But um, they're asking questions and they're looking into the what's Canada been doing for the number of years now, leading up into this point where uh, they're on the verge of qualification. So it's not only coming from from within Canada, but it's also you're seeing some attention being drawn from from the rest of the world as well. Paul, wh- how much do you enjoy watching a guy like Richie Larea? I feel like there be a level of relatability. Mm. I mean, you played on both sides of the pitch, right, left, in the middle, wherever the team needed. Um, and Richie Larea is much the same. Uh, he's been Mr. Utility for uh, John Herdman and this squad. Uh, wh- what can you say about his game and how much do you enjoy it? Yeah, Richie's a real, you know, clever, dynamic, uh, quick player. You know, he causes all sorts of problems going forward, uh, defends really well. So he's really a modern, you know, really a, a, a perfect modern uh, modern day fullback in in one sense. Can play as a wing back, can play as a fullback, and like you said, can play on either side, um, and is effective on either side. Uh, sometimes you you'll see a right footed player go on the left who's not really as effective getting forward, but he's able to do that and uh, to to a high degree of effectiveness for sure. So he's uh, he has yeah, that that ability. Uh, and like I said, he's a danger all the time going forward for the uh, for the team. He draws a lot of fouls, draws penalties. Um, yeah, and he's like I said, very very good on the defensive side as well. So uh, yeah, great to see another uh, a Canadian coming through, and he's doing really well. Hopefully, he can get himself going a little bit with his club. I'm sure that's going to come any time now. You know, he's uh, he's over there, and it's a, it's a grind for him for sure when you when you join a club. Uh, mid-season like he did so you know he's gonna need some patience and hopefully that uh, his time will come there as well well you're the perfect person to ask this question of what is it about Brampton and soccer yeah I get it asked all the time uh, it's, uh, I is don't there know seven seven players the vac- I think yeah. seven players on on this roster from from Brampton or from from programs in Brampton yeah, and you know, just being at uh, TFC here, um, even at York where I was last uh, last couple of seasons, there's you know we got a great number coming in as well from Brampton. So uh, tough one to say. Uh, just definitely a place where uh, we've the city is. Uh, it started, I think, probably in my time with uh, with Jason with Jason Bent and, uh, you know, and then Atiba coming through, Ian Hume coming through from Brampton. And then now it's just, uh, it's just got so many coming through now. It's just crazy. So I, I don't know. I don't have a clear answer as to why, but it's definitely a, a great place uh, that uh, Canada has been uh, fortunate enough to pick from. Paul, someone from Brampton that you get to work with is uh, Jonathan Osorio. What, have you made of the progression he's made throughout his career and where he's at now? Yeah, you've seen him over the number of years. I mean, I don't need to tell you how, how good of a player he is, how clever of a player he is in the midfield. You know, you just see the goal he scores on the weekend for us uh, with a late run, similar to what he scored against Dallas early in the season. In our first game, you know, he's, he's clever enough on the ball. He's very good technically. Uh, can see a pass and and like you like you saw on the weekend is able to also score goals and, and important goals for that matter. Uh, he's done that for his club for a number of t- uh, years and he's done that uh, within with the national team as well. So uh, no, Jonathan's a pleasure to work with. You know he's a ultimate professional when you're working with him on a daily basis. You can see that right away. 
how, uh, how much he takes care of himself on and off the pitch and, uh, you know, what he puts in in every session on a daily basis, how much extra work he's doing and, and that matter. You see everything from him uh, and you see what a top pro that he really is. And, uh, you know, uh, there's no surprise to where he is in his career right now and what he's doing both at the club and the country. Paul, it seems that when, when you look when you look at Jonathan Osorio, you look back to that that first that that TFC title run, and it wasn't the smoothest of seasons for him. Uh, Greg Vanny moved him around a lot, but it seemed as if I mean I remember talking to him after they had won that championship, after they'd won that game at BMO Field, and I remember him talking about how he just he felt as if he had just grown and become. I wouldn't say become smarter, but just had had a greater awareness of the game over the course of that year that he felt that he just arrived because he was, it, it wasn't necessarily the smoothest season for him. Does that, do, do you see that happen a lot with, with young players where it kind of all clicks and at times it's not necessarily clicking because they've had just the greatest year in the planet. It's because they've had some issues and they've had to overcome some things and, and 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 you know at the end kind of make something out of out of a year that could have gone could have gone off the rails yeah i mean there's no uh, there's no there's no you know there's no hiding the fact that there's no, nothing's easy for a player on every every single season nothing goes perfect for them and there's going to be uh struggles throughout a season and especially early on in your career when you're when you're just finding uh, you know, you're finding out yourself and how to become a, a professional, and not just once you become that pro, you're you're trying to now maintain that level. Um, and then within that, you're going to have some ups and downs throughout the season, and you're going to be challenged in different ways with different coaches and coaches asking you to do different things uh, than previous coaches uh, have done, and they're asking you to think different ways. They're asking you to to do different things on the pitch that you maybe haven't done, and you know, it takes time to figure that out and. Uh, you know, I'm sure that season was for him a time when he, you know, something probably clicked, something figured it out for him, you know, during the season where that was, you know, watching a lot of video, doing a lot of work, uh, you know, on the pitch as well with video, without it. And, uh, you know, and that led to, to the, you know, the end of the, the season where they were champions. So, um, you know, also is a guy who just puts in a tremendous amount of work and he's always thinking about football and always doing the right thing. So there's no surprise that he, uh, you know, that season, if it was a struggle for him at times, that he wasn't able to, uh, throughout the season, figure it out and finish on, on top like he did. Paul, when I look at this World Cup qualifying campaign for Canada, I look at where Canada was after five matches, having won one and drawn four. And that could have been a moment where, on one side, you could have looked at the glass half empty and said, hey... You've only won one of these five matches. Or you could have looked at it, the glass half full, and said, hey, you've gone to Mexico, you've gotten the point. You've gone to U.S., you've gotten the point. You've got big matches coming up at home where you can take care of business, uh, and you're undefeated at this point. What, Looking from afar, what, what is it about this team that looked at that situation as the glass half full and then has gone on to win six straight? Yeah, I'm sure it was it was definitely that. I mean, you like you said, you went into to two really probably the two toughest places to get uh, to get a result to, against the two you know traditionally the two best uh, the best teams in, in Concacaf um, throughout the number of years. So yeah, you, you looked at it, you got your point in Mexico, you got a point in the, against the U.S., uh, and then you were coming home after that with for for a number of games to get to uh, to get some you know some wins and. When you're on, when you're away from home in Concacaf and in any World Cup qualifying, for that matter, if you're getting a point, that's never a bad result. Um, the key then is now to win your home matches, and you've got to be able to do that. I think the only part of that initial uh, bunch of games that we just spoke about was, you know, that they would have looked at with, you know, uh, a little bit of regret would have probably been the first one against was the Honduras when they drew at home, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken. So that one might have been one that could have hurt you. Uh, but other than that, the other results were okay. And, you know, you're coming now home and you're, you're looking to actually win games. Obviously, uh, when you were in that position, you couldn't have come back home and afforded to probably draw one or two more matches. You needed to win them. Uh, and then all of a sudden your, your campaign is in the headed in the right, uh, in the right direction, like it is right now. So yeah, I don't think there was any real 
percent of panic because I think the the results were good, um, and they were coming home to to do what they did. And uh, like I said, so well on their way now. Last question from us, Paul. Uh, playing in Costa Rica, I, I, what is? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to answer this question, but playing in Central America is is is, is different than playing a lot of other places. So I'm going to give you Costa Rica. El Salvador, Honduras, one, two, three. Where would you least like to play out of those three? And and how does playing in in Costa Rica compare to Honduras or El Salvador? Uh, for me, I'd go with it. it uh, Clary, Honduras, El Salvador, then Costa Rica. To be honest, so yeah, uh, out of the three, I'd say for me, all Costa Rica was a place where I didn't, you know, it, it, for whatever reason, we always matched up well against Costa Rica. Did well against them. Um, and really had a poor, poor, uh, uh, poor results for sure in Honduras, obviously. But um, yeah, so I would rank Honduras harder. Um, that saying, it's not easy to go there for mm-hmm. sure. It's not going to mm-hmm. be easy tonight. Don't get me wrong. Uh, don't don't think that I'm telling you it's going to be an easy place to go to for sure. Uh, they're really hyped up for the game. They've got, um, you know, like uh, people have seen, their league's been stopped for a little while, just preparing for this game tonight. They know how important it is that. Uh, you know, they basically need three wins to to have any chance. And uh, obviously they know they're competing probably most likely with Panama to finish in the fourth position to give themselves a chance. So um, they know what's at stake. So it's not going to be easy for sure. Don't get me wrong. But um, if there was a a place out of the three to choose from, uh, even though Costa Rica is a better place, better, probably a better team than than El Salvador, I'd say that uh, uh, I would choose that one. Paul, really good of you to join us today. Thanks so much. Really appreciate your insight. Stay safe. Be well.